In this video, I'm going to show you how you can connect Bolt to Superbase, which is basically a backend as a service. And you can do that now very easily from within Bolt because Bolt has recently rolled out its integration to Superbase from within the interface. You can see this button over here on the top right that says connect to Superbase. With this functionality, now you can very easily connect your data to a database and basically just retrieve this based on your user login. Now, typically you would use both authentication and database functionality with the same provider. Superbase is not just a database, but it is also an authentication provider, which means that you do your sign out, sign in, user creation, and all of that is possible within Superbase. But in this case, specific case, what we have done is to implement authentication using a different service, like the service we used is called Clerk. So you can still implement your database with a Superbase and keep your authentication in Clerk or remove your Clerk authentication and combine them all in Superbase. So I'm going to go into my application that I just connected. So as you see on the top right, there was a connect to Superbase and now I already connected it. So when you just say connect, it opens Superbase, you just create an account, just follow the instructions and you just have to approve all permissions. And when you do that, the connection will just automatically happen for you. And let's just wait for the application to load. So here I am in my application and if I log in, again, it logs in through this provider called Clerk that I previously taught how to do. So now when you go say view a project, it opens this dashboard of Superbase. Now there's a lot going on here. I know it's very intimidating with a lot of information, but the main things that you actually need to know is the project URL and there's another key which is not over here. This is the public key. You need a private key to be able to access your database. So. Let's go look at what's around. So you have your database option over here. You have your integrations with which you can integrate different services. We are not going to go use any of those either. And you have your project settings. So within project settings, you can see that the project name is randomly assigned for you. You can obviously go rename it as mentoring, mentor management platform or whatever. I'm just going to keep this as is for now. If I go into the API section over here, I can see that here we have a service role secret. This is a secret that we need to give Superbase for it to access our database. So I'm just going to copy this. Once I've copied this, I can go into my bold and I can just Here's my secret key and let me paste my secret key here. Here's my public URL and let's see. I will go back into my Superbase and I'll connect my project URL. That's what we need, not public URL. So we're going to say here's my project URL and I will paste my project URL. And let's see, we might need one more piece of information. Yeah, I think that's it. So we can go back into bold and say, so of course, this is the information to link your database to your project that you need. So you're going to go tell your AI agent that please add my bookings and my associated to my email address to database. Uh, Superbase. I understand that it's a database. Here's my project URL and here's my secret key. And I want to say the one last thing that you want to do is you want the instructions or the SQL command. SQL stands for structured query language. It's basically the command that you take from here and put it inside Superbase to be able to create that table structure for you. So you just need that SQL command to create that table inside Superbase. You can go create it there manually as well, but Bolt understands context of what you need here because it has access to your entire code base. So it can tell you what SQL commands you need. So finally, you, you would just go and say that, give me the SQL command to create this table that is linked to my user account. So you're saying, look, I need to create this table. I want to store all this booking information. Oh, we can say that. Create this table that stores my scheduled trial session. So you know that you have a trial session and once you schedule it, it's linked to a user account and you want to create this table where it maps for every user what are the different trial sessions that you've booked. 
right? Straightforward. So you kind of have to make this, this judgment in terms of how you want to map the information for that user account to the information that you're offering on the platform, and then just explain what you want to say to the agent. So let's go and give this a try and see what happens. I'll help you create the SQL migration file for storing bookings with proper relationships and security policies. Okay, so it created these migrations right within the code and Superbase can read from within the code, which is very cool. You, so you don't have to actually go into the Superbase and do this, uh, which would have been the other way to do it if you use a different code editor. So it creates bookings. Okay, so what it did was make a bookings table with all the necessary field. It linked bookings to the users via the clerk user ID, which is awesome. It figured that we are not using Superbase, so it understands that we are using a different provider. And it also includes session details, the company info and status tracking, which is very cool. We didn't explicitly specify that we needed all of this. It implements RLS policies to ensure view their own bookings, only those logged in users view their own bookings. They can create new bookings and update new bookings. To use this in your application, the user ID will be automatically populated. The state status fields, the status field shows tracking of booking statuses and the RLS policies ensure. Okay, great. So I think everything is never share your key. I understand that. Rotating your key since it was exposed to an in key in your ENV file is safe to use for client side applications. Okay, so now that we have this, we can always go and say apply changes. So it says create booking for create bookings table for mentor sessions. So once you apply these changes, it would automatically go create these tables. And let's see, open Superbase and I can show you that if it actually created this table. So if I go here and I can go into these tables and if you see previously it was empty and now you can see this thing called booking and you can see all the different columns within this table. So you have your ID, mentor ID, session date, session time, and so on, right? So if I go back to bold, um, you can see, let's refresh this. This is a problem with my browser that it just keeps launching a new window on its own because it's the way this browser is built. You probably shouldn't see this error if you used Chrome. Okay. So let me try and log in and I am going to enter my email address. Again, I cannot use Google because Google will only work in production, unfortunately. I'm gonna go into this one and let me refresh my page. And I got my code. I'm going to go back to bold. And as you see, the super base entries are zero. You have nothing over here. But when I go here and type this, it logs in, okay? The entries should still be zero because I haven't made any booking. So let's go and schedule a session. So I'm gonna say, my name is Ashwin and purchases, test company, test project, and let's put today's date and available times at 1 p.m. Okay, so let me schedule a session. I will receive an email shortly and it says it's successfully scheduled a session. So if I go into my bookings, I don't see anything. It's a use case that we need to build, but now at least I should see this reflected in my database. So I can go here, I don't see anything here. Let me refresh my page it doesn't create a database. So clearly there is one more step left to be done and we can do this easily right now. So when I schedule a trial session using the model, create an entry in the database to store the current bookings of the logged in user. So it created the database, it set it up in Superbase, but it forgot to add the booking functionality into the table. So I guess you had to say that again. Okay, so now it created the booking model. It already, there is a booking model. It just it just updated the function to, to go store that information within the database. So that's what happened. Let's see, there might be some error. Okay, fail to resolve from this, this, this file exists. Okay, clearly it failed to install that Superbase package. So let's paste that error and just let it figure it out. Okay. I think now it should work without any errors. Okay, great. Let me try and schedule a session again. Again, we need test, test, and I will put this 10 a.m. and I'll schedule a session. And it does something. That's why probably there's a problem. Error creating booking new row violates row level security policy. So let's try and get AI to fix this because there is a mismatch on some policy that it created on who gets to add a row level entry. So just let it figure this thing out. So it creates these security level policies to prevent 
hackers from being able to modify your database. So that's just a bit of a, a good to have. And, you know, these things also present these kind of inconvenience when you're working with it. But just give it a couple of shots and it will fix the policies for you. Okay, it may have completed. So let's say my ask gmail.com and then test, test. What PM? Okay, let's see what the problem is. It understands that it already failed once, so that's a good thing. So it probably will try something different. Okay, simplify RSS policy to direct user ID comparison, remove J complex JWT and handling. Okay, this is a bit technical. We don't need to bother about that. And let's see if it works out. And select a date is today and schedule session. Okay, no errors. Great. So let's go into our super base and refresh the page and see if we can find a data entry. There you go. Looks like it worked. So you have your ID, you have your booking, and then there's the mentor ID, and then you have your session time, the project description, everything, its status is still pending. Great. So status is something it assumed that somehow we will have an approval process. And now what we can do is try to pull out all this information in my bookings. So we can do that because right now, if you click on my bookings, my page is a little bit slow. Okay, it looks like Bolt hung up on me. So I'm gonna close this and refresh this page once again. Okay, there you go. Yeah, so now if I click on my bookings, obviously there's nothing happens. So I'm just gonna refresh this page. So I will say now implement the my bookings model functionality to show all my current bookings as a signed in user. Open a model with all the bookings as a log in user I've made. Simple, straightforward. I just wanna see a, a, a drop, a, model with all the bookings that I've previously made. Superbase refer to the data from Superbase. You don't have to say this, I think, but I mean, it's just to be safe to say that, look, I want to bring this functionality. The data lies in Superbase. Just connect the both and just show me what I need. And let's give this a shot. Fully, it does everything in one single shot. It is now creating a My Bookings model. So it's creating the whole front end of the application. And what it does is, oh, wow, it's making a pretty big model. So now it's making some changes to the navigation, which I believe it was already there. List of all bookings. Okay, I don't think it, okay, let's refresh. Okay, there you go. So it also even pulled out this data from Superbase and it presented here. So this is how you connect it to your database. I can always like sign out. And once I sign out, obviously you shouldn't be able to see the bookings. Actually, let's go and deploy this and we will try our Google sign in and see if it works properly. Okay. So let's open our account and we will get started for free. We will use Google and let me try a different email address right now. I'll try this email address and it goes into clerk. It doesn't use Superbase and clerk is in development mode. That's okay. If I go into my bookings, oh, they see. So now there is a problem. It, the problem is that the my bookings always pulls out all the bookings from my database. There is obviously no separation based on which user the booking is linked to. So that's why you need to test. So now we can go back and say that my bookings is not linked to the sign in user. Ensure the user ID of the signed in user matches while retrieving the bookings of the user. So you're saying, look, you're just pulling out all the bookings, right? It's isn't filtering by user ID. Let's fix this. So duh, it should have just figured it out, but clearly it did not. So it's now fix bookings query to the filter by user ID. And let's see. So it added this like, okay, it needs to match this user ID and that should work, right? So I guess, okay, let's redeploy it. And let's see, now it should hopefully just work without you having to see all the bookings of everyone, regardless of which account you log in from, which would kind of be catastrophic for an application that you build privacy wise. And yeah, so there you go. So I'm here. When I go into this, I see no bookings found. Let me go and make this booking. So I'm going to say my name, I'm going to put my email address and company name and project description. Oh, let's try a different one. So I'm going to say meta and then I'm going to say meta and I will put 21st 
and one and schedule session it scheduled the session let's go into the table let's refresh this thing you should be able to see two entries right now one is from test one is from meta there you see everything looks fine and when i go back into bold oh not this one when i go back into bold and i go say my bookings oops let me refresh the page there you go it says meta meta and sarah chen is of course the person that we made the booking with and it still shows pending so now everything works fine so this is how you integrate superbase with bold it's fairly simple you just have to remember that first you need to link it you need to give it the keys and you need to ask it to create the table and it creates the sql table and then just tell it to just understand what happens right so understand that when you make a booking or make some operation on the front end you need that information to go store in the database and then once it stores in the database you need to retrieve it when you logged in so everything is anchored around your user logged in state so based on your user id it knows how to retrieve that information from this huge table which contains all the bookings of all the people it filters out based on your user id and displays it in your booking so this is kind of the back end architecture that you need to know definitely as your project size grows and your complexity of what you're working on you might need a little more guidance on how to approach databases i can make a separate video about that later but for simple use cases like this this should be a straightforward way to integrate your database.